for today's interview, we have not only one, but two guests. On one end of the line, we have Neil Kramer, who is a philosopher, a mystic, and a lifelong truth seeker, which made him look into a large variety of subjects concerning the mystery of life. He was set on this path at an early age through several paranormal experiences, which made him question whether there isn't more to reality compared to what most people believe it to be. After a convincing demonstration of how reality can be tweaked, which Neil witnessed during his teenage years, he was hooked on figuring out what's really going on. He shares his insights through lectures, interviews, personal consultations, and his soon to be released first book, The Unfoldment. On the other end of the line, we have Thomas Campbell, a physicist who got interested into researching and exploring human consciousness. In the early 70s, Tom came into contact with Bob Monroe, a TV and radio show producer interested in out-of-body experiences. Bob taught Tom how his consciousness can deliberately leave his body, and Tom started to map out the realms he found himself in with the scientific mindset he was trained to use as a physicist. Over the last 30 years, Tom developed his My Big Toe Theory, a model of reality that unites physics and metaphysics and can explain the normal as well as the paranormal. Besides writing his My Big Toe uh, trilogy, Tom uh, gives lectures and workshops to share his insights. So, Tom and Neil, is there anything that should be added to your introduction or shall we jump right into the first question? Oh, let's get right into it. Absolutely. Okay, good. So the first question is for Neil, and it relates to physical laws. Are they rigid or fluid? That's the topic. According to Tom's My Big Toe Theory, the physical laws developed as part of the rule set of this virtual reality that we are living in. So according to Tom, the physical laws are part of the evolutionary process and not a never-changing constant. If we look at Rupert Sheldrake for a minute, he developed his morphic field theory, and according to Rupert, physical laws are more like habits of nature, so they can change over long periods of time. So my question to you is, how flexible are our physical laws and those constants of nature really when we look at history in the really long term? And if these constants are actually more flexible than we currently think, what are the implications of this for our currently extrapolation backwards to the time of the Big Bang? <laughs> Wow, in 25 nice words or less. <laughs> Fantastic first question. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I think that Tom's right, that the laws are there for a reason, and they're there to help in a way. And there is a certain immutable quality to them, because it's all very well talking in abstract terms about how physics can be easily bent and stuff. But then try going walking across the surface of the river or try putting, um, you know, a bullet in your brain and see how well you do. So there are physical laws there for a reason. Um, I'm also quite fond of um, Sheldrake's morphic field resonance and so on. And I, and I get what he's saying with that. And I think that's interesting as well. The way I perceive it is that this what i call the third density experience this this realm that we find ourselves in is um it's a means of showing the effects of consciousness in a temporal zone basically so the whole mechanism of cause and effect to a large extent is to say well rather than having instant manifestation rather than having uh, consciousness absolutely sculpt things around and mold the clay lightning fast as it might do in a dream or in um, a higher density experience let's see what happens where time is put into the equation into this realm uh, because that shows you from a very clockwork point of view what your consciousness does to the environment to the people to the other consciousness around you and as you begin to conduct that, as you begin to purify your vessel for channeling consciousness, is how I would put it personally, um, you start to see an increase and a potency um, in your conscious experiences. And from that first hint at thinking, well, 
what I feel and think and how I resonate does seem to have a subtle effect on the world around me, that first inclination begins to grow and you realize that it's not subtle, it's actually very profound, but your perceptive apparatus is filtered against that if you've been brought up in a Western materialist cultural paradigm. And as you begin to create this stillness, and as you begin to cultivate these techniques for moving your consciousness to a different state, you start to grasp um, the depth of penetration of how consciousness is woven into this, this realm. And of course, depending on your mindset, I know that um, Thomas will probably be more familiar with the works of David Bohm than I am, so I'm not going to... Uh, try and expound all, all his stuff but certainly from a, a physics point of view um, I think that was grasped a long time ago in the 20s and 30s and certain people have, have started to create bridges between those two worlds my personal journey has been a sort of mystical one really and um, I kind of like went there by a different route although I think the essential foundations of it are, are rather similar and being familiar with some of the principles of, of Thomas's work I think we probably share the um, idea that this 3D realm is is really a, a developmental realm and it's a place to kind of hone skills and to learn and to put oneself in a, a teaching uh, environment where you start to understand the power of consciousness and how it can be uh, used to create. But it has to be done in a very specific way, in a ver very specific realm. And so I think the laws of physics contain that until appropriate for me. So most people are subject to those just as a hard scientist would insist that everybody is. The only difference in my perception is I wouldn't say everybody is. I say everybody is until appropriate. And then they start to bend and then they start to change a little bit. Um, but I think that is, is a very advanced state of being. And um, although it's open to everybody, it's a, a developmental marker rather than any sort of like ultimate exist, you know, final destination is to say, well, now you start to see the physics change a little bit. There's a certain responsibility comes with that, which is you don't need to go running around waving your arms in the air um, or, you know, going on stage and, and, and showing it to audiences. Um, it's actually, it's a new mountain peak that's come into view. And as you go to it, unsurprisingly, as soon as you get there, you, you see an even bigger mountain range in the distance and on and on it goes. So th that would be my outline answer f for you, Oliver. Um, so I'll put that back over to you and let, let's, um, let's see what you think about that. And obviously, let's, let's get Thomas's feedback too. Yeah, I think that's, let's answer Tom first. Um, well, of course, I agree with everything that, uh, that Neil said. Uh, uh, it, uh, my perspective, the way I come to it is from a different direction. But uh, certainly, uh, you know, as I'm fond of saying, there, are, there is but one truth, but there are many, many paths that lead to that one truth and, and many, many ways to see that one truth, many uh, perspectives of that one truth. So I agree with, with Neil. Um, you know, our physical uh, rules fluid are constant. Um, you know, we have to realize that, uh, and this you will find is all in consonance with, uh, with Neil's discussion, we have to realize that there are more than just physical rules. You know, there are rules that deal with our physical reality, and um, generally the science tries to dig these rules out and discover what they are, and they provide the structure for this reality frame. Uh, they provide the, you know, we can say the rules. I call it the rule set, but uh, it's the structure. You can't have a, a reality frame that's constantly changing, like, uh, you know, one day you walk on water and one day you can't, as, as Neil was saying, you know, and that sometimes things fall up, sometimes things fall down. And that would not be a very effective reality frame for consciousness to experience in. So you need rules of how things will work. Energy exchanges uh, basically define the, 
define the rule set. And those rules are, are kind of given, if you will, in the sense that um, this reality frame has evolved based on those rules. So we are a product of those kinds of, of uh, what we would say physical rules, how this physical reality works. But besides that, uh, there are rules of consciousness, if you will. There are non-physical rules as well as physical rules. And um, because this physical reality is not the fundamental reality. The fundamental reality is consciousness. The physical reality is just a virtual reality created within consciousness to provide us a place to learn, to grow, to experience, to evolve the quality of our of our being. So it, it gives us a schoolhouse for growing up. But there are some rules that have to do with consciousness as well. For instance, uh, one of the um, rules of consciousness is that you, in many ways, create your own reality. And you do this in in several ways. You do it through interpretation. You are consciousness imagining you're in a physical reality, not a physical being imagining that you have a consciousness uh, supported, you know, derived from the brain. You know, that's, it's, it's, the truth of the matter is just the opposite. You are consciousness and uh, you are imagining that you're living in this physical reality. So you interpret this reality in terms of, of uh, your own experience, your own history. You get data. You think you get data through your senses, but basically you're getting data from a data stream into your consciousness that you interpret as this reality frame, but you interpret it personally. So we can change our reality just by changing how we interpret the data that comes to us. Um, that's one way. We can change our reality because this, this larger consciousness system we're a part of is moved by intent. Intent is the fundamental uh, motive force, if you will, within consciousness. And your intent modifies the probability of what is likely to happen next. So we, we create our own reali our, our reality in that way. We influence what happens next. But of course, what happens next for the most part, will fall within those physical rules that we discussed, but not always. There are there are exceptions, and uh, those rules uh, kind of apply in general. Uh, when you get down and measure them, uh, they'll always be there. But it doesn't mean that you can't. Uh, uh, <laughs> some people say uh, um, hack the system a little bit. You can you can do that. So we also. We also create our own reality based on our interactions with others, how we act. And Neil was making this point, how we interact, how we approach things, whether we approach from fear and ego or whether we approach from love and caring and, uh, um, you know, no fear, no ego. We come from the, from the caring side, the compassionate side then we change the reality around us. We interact with others. We help them see things differently. We help the whole reality frame change because of us. So the individual unit of consciousness is the fundamental thing. It is consciousness. It's in a state of evolving, growing up, becoming love. That's its purpose and point for being here. And the physical, the physical rules, though they aren't going to change much, they can change some based on uncertainty. Okay, now we can in this physical reality, since it's a virtual reality, things that we, you know, believe in, such as, you know, let's say particles like electrons, you know, that sort of thing, you know, the nature of them can change where there is uncertainty. The nature of our rule set can change where there is uncertainty. And this whole virtual reality is here for a purpose. And like I say, that's to give us a place in order to learn and grow. And as that, as we change, as we as consciousness grow up and change, then the way the, the, the learning lab, the classroom will also change too, to accommodate that, to make our, our growing more efficient. 
So everything in that sense is fluid. Think of this as a big simulation.